What's up and welcome back to my channel, Happleworks. This is Josh and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint match the cladding and texture on your 2022 Subaru WRX. Depending on what color your 2022 Subaru WRX is, you will have to go to the paint store and give them that paint coat. Open your door and there's gonna be a little tag here and in the right corner, there's gonna be a section that says color code. And for ceramic white, that color code is M6Y. Now where to go to get the paint? You're gonna to wanna to find something like a automotive paint store. Most places are gonna be able to do this for you. For us, we have a Napa paint store, which I went to, and you can actually purchase spray cans. Um, it will have a base coat um, in the color of your vehicle, which is what I just showed you how to get the paint coat for. I've also purchased um, the crystal black silica that I've been using on like the front trim pieces up here um, to paint match. It's a uh, fun fact, this is the same color that the sport grill is and it's also the same color that's found on your trunk on that little trim piece that runs across. That's crystal black silica. I wanna get those, they're a little bit more pricey so these run about $40 a piece but you're just not gonna get any better results. And quite honestly, you might be able to find a white color that is close, but it is just not going to be the same. And especially like with white, it's really important to get the right mixture. This is the magic potion to making this look good. The second thing you're gonna wanna get is these. And you can head on Amazon and purchase these, and I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but this is your 2K clear coat. Now these are, going to make your um, your spray paint job look professional um, and I'm, I'm telling you this is the one thing you don't want to cheap out on um, they are relatively cheap you can buy them for about 25 bucks a can um, they have this little red activator piece in the top you're gonna take that off you're gonna pop it in the bottom you smash it up hold it there and then you shake the can forever um, they have about a 24 hour, or I think it's even a 48 hour, I'm not sure, but they have a shelf life. So once you've popped them, you wanna use them. Um, so if you have multiple pieces you're painting, you're gonna want to make sure that you've got all of your pieces laid out and ready to go. Okay, the next thing you're gonna need if you wanna finish like this is you're going to have to get something to sand with. Now, this is a Milwaukee Random Orbital Sander. Um, any other sander should do just fine. For me, this just makes it a lot easier. It's handheld, it's battery powered, so I can swap out batteries, and it makes this job relatively easy, although you are gonna be sanding quite a bit. Um, so this is more so for the big surfaces to kind of knock down all the texture, and then you're gonna have something probably more handheld um, so that you can get into the corners and all of the little delicate areas that the big sander can't. Um, I'm using mainly 150 and 180 grit um, and the 180 grit I even use after I prime the surfaces and just to get a smooth finish and then I can go with something smoother as well after that. Um, so just get yourself a couple of different grits, um, anything ranging from um, 150 or coarser um, to probably somewhere closer to like a thousand grit or whatever is smoother for you um, to just get that really smooth finish. Um, but I have absolutely done it with just this on the on the primer and then paint and it looks perfectly fine. Actually, that's what I did with these. There wasn't anything finer used than um, this 180 grit. Now, if you're watching this and you're still like, I have no idea what he's talking about. Why are we paint matching things on this car? This is what I'm talking about. And a lot of the other parts are already done, um, but I will kind of explain how to take those off and do those as well. But the same thing is gonna apply for the side skirts. Now this is the kind of the last piece that I still have left that I want to color match. And as you can see, it has this texture on it that is all over these new WRXs. Now, I know there's a purpose to it. I know that it's been explained as a aerodynamic, you know, it helps with your fuel efficiency and everything. And that's all fine and great, but I don't really like it. We're gonna remove it, then we are going to sand it. Um, we're gonna take all the texture off and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Then we're going to, when it's uh, smoother, we're gonna hit it with some primer and really smooth it out because this stuff, 
um, and maybe I'm doing it wrong, but this stuff, when you really sand it, it kind of tends to gum up a little bit and form these tiny little plastic pieces that just, um, t uh, it, it creates almost like a, like a, I would almost call it like a furry texture on top of the plastic. So um, you solve that by priming it and sanding it and just getting a really nice surface at the end. So then when you've got it primed, then you've done your last sanding, then we'll throw the, um, the base coat on and then the clear coat and you'll see it comes out really, really nice. And I'll show you a couple of the other, um, the other panels real quick. So here's a really good example. This is the rear bumper that I had professionally done at a highly esteemed um, paint shop. And they did a really, really good job and did exactly what I asked. People are gonna spend probably closer to $700 to $1,000 just on the rear bumper. So then I took these off and I did these myself. So look at the difference between this, this, and this and really there isn't any and that's the awesome part you can do this at home you have to take your time and you have to be patient with it but your results are gonna be really good now I'm gonna give you a real we're real quick closer look to show you something okay this is some of the worst of it but there is some texture right here and that's just for me not being diligent and not being very experienced so what I meant is Take your time, sand it, and follow the steps that I'm going to outline in this video, and you shouldn't end up with something like this. Here's the rear fenders. Here's the rear bumper. There's the side skirts that we're going to paint, and then there is the front fenders, and those go all the way to the front here and wrap in. On another note, I just want to show you this because the same process applies to the black cladding on the front of the vehicle is the plastic. Um, I went ahead and shaved these down and then painted them in crystal black silica. Um, now, if you get super close, like really, really close, you might be able to tell that I painted it myself. But really from a step back, I mean, you've got all the reflections you need. This isn't polished yet, so it's not perfect, but the clear coat and everything that I'm using that I'll show you is just incredible. It really just gives it a really glossy finish and everything. And, um, so yeah, I hope you can use this video to also apply it to other parts of your car because I mean, man, the glossy front end, it just looks so much better than the plastic, I think. Since we're only removing the side skirts, I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. You have two clips right here. Now these are gonna require Phillips heads and it's gonna be easiest if you turn your wheel um, towards the left so you can get to these easier. And then you're gonna do the right on the other side. But there's a clip here, a clip here, and then there's a pop clip down here. And there'll be five large clips running along the bottom of this. And then this should be able to pull right out. I would recommend taking all those clips and just putting them somewhere where you're not gonna lose them. After you've got all those loose, you can open your doors. And then you simply grab that side skirt and just pull. If when you're pulling, any of these little clips come out, they're real easy to just pop right back in. They just slide in from the side and you'll need those to reattach this. More thing not to forget is your sandable primer. You can pick this up at an O'Reilly's or any kind of auto parts store. You're gonna just uh, do a lot of sanding of the texture. Then you're gonna apply a lot of this and sand that. And if it's not perfect, you're gonna do it over and over and over again until it's nice and you have a good surface. And then we can apply paint. So I wanna show you real quick the first sanding disc that I use is 120 grit. And that just knocks down all of the texture really quickly. After that, I grab a 150 to kind of clean up all the areas. And that gets out most of the big scratches and everything. And then for the very last one, and this is mainly when you are, um, you can do a pass before you do the primer, but I usually use this after the primer that's 180. So we go 120, 150, 180. Another combination may work for you, so just, uh, trial and error that for yourself, but for me, this is what works. 
As for the sanding portion, I hope you can kind of see this texture right here. I'm going to go ahead and do a pass with the with the sander and I'll show you kind of how far you got to go before you spray down the sandable primer and then sand that and just try and get as smooth as possible finish. Here's the texture you're looking for. You're looking for a really smooth finish. If you go too far, it almost gets a little fuzzy and then you're gonna have to just sand that out with the primer. But yeah, you're looking for kind of like this finish where you can't see or feel the texture anymore. And it's relatively easy. It, you don't need to sand a ton. Um, what you do wanna pay attention to is when you get to these corners right here, um, either hand sand them or just be very diligent about how you sand this. This is be smart with how you sand and practice a little bit on edges that you can't see quite as much. Um, but yeah, here's kind of the finish you're looking for and then I'll fast forward through some stuff or I'll just skip to the part where I'm almost done sanding these. Here's the side skirt after using the 120 and then the 150 grit. What I like to do is I like to focus on all the flat areas first and get those knocked down. That way I know those are clean and then I go in and do the edges um, with the 150 grit and then I just do a full pass over everything with the 150 to clean it up. Now, just a little note, um, you're gonna have, before you do any kind of primer, you're gonna have to clean the heck out of this thing because this, it just, um, all this stuff, hope I can show this a little bit. Yeah, as you can see, there's all this little fine dust on it and it gets all over you. As you can see, it's all over my my hands and it gave me a little glove tan even because um, I was wearing rubber gloves. But yeah, so just be aware of that. Don't just sand this down and then start spraying primer because all this little dust is gonna show through the primer and it's gonna make for a rough surface. So the best way to do this I've found is um, both a microfiber um, really works well to kind of pick up all of the dust. And then lastly, just a tack cloth to get the rest off. And the tack cloth is nothing but just like a little it's like a little sticky cloth that picks up all of the, the dust. Next step is to hit it with some primer and just get a light coating first and then later we'll sand it and put another coat. Now for the primers, you're basically just going to repeat the step until you get the smoothest finish you think you can get out of it. So it'll be primer, dry, sand it with the just the finest grit sandpaper you have, get it nice and smooth, and then repeat over and over and over until there is no more texture. And if it's nice and smooth, then you can go and hit it with the next step, which would be the paint. Put the blue tape here just to protect the edge a little bit and keep this just looking like the plastic underneath. Um, don't need a whole lot of overspray, but yeah, so now as you're spraying, you'll just have this nice clean edge going along and that just goes across the entire part all the way to here. Now likely you're never ever going to see this edge anyways because it's way underneath the car. What it does do, leaving this black underneath here, just the exposed plastic, is it'll look a lot nicer if and when you have, you know, you're going underneath the car with a jack and you accidentally scrape it. A scrape in the black plastic is going to look a lot better than a scrape in white painted black plastic because you're going to have a big black scratch instead of it just being, you know, a white scratch. It's, it's going to blend in with this black rather than being this huge eyesore if you ever look underneath the car. Okay, and here's what I'm talking about. So this is just the first application of primer, no sanding. Here is the first application of primer with sanding. And I hope you can hear this, but I'll show you the difference. As you can hear, it's already much smoother. And do this and repeat it two or three times and you're gonna have a really, really smooth surface to paint on. Here we are with the fully primed and sanded side skirt. As you can tell, the finish is really, really smooth. There's almost no texture at all. I already went ahead and wiped it down with a microfiber towel and a tack cloth. If you wanna be extra serious about this, you can take a um, alcohol wipe or just isopropyl alcohol on a fresh rag and wipe this all down and that will really ensure that it's clean. 
Now, I do want to say one thing before we start. This is kind of where you need to start managing your expectations. You, if you're anything like me, you're painting in the dark because you've run out of time. It is right inside your garage and bugs love that. So, as you're painting, there is a slight chance that bugs will land in your paints. Now, this is stuff that you might be able to buff out. Um, in some cases, if it's a large enough bug, it won't. Um, and obviously, I don't have a perfectly sealed environment where all the dust is gonna be pretty much eliminated. There is going to be some imperfections, but I will show you at the end what this looks like. There is great, great, great videos out there teaching you how to spray paint um, with spray cans and getting a perfect finish. I'm not that guy for you guys. I, I, will, I will hopefully teach you how to do this and I will hopefully give you the confidence to do this yourself. That's really the goal here. I wanna show you that with minimal financial input, and a lot of effort, you can make some really, really good looking flares that in some cases are better than the ones that I've seen dealers install or have paint shops do. I actually just had somebody come by with one um, that was paint matched and when we looked closely, we even saw some texture on it. Um, and it actually made me feel really good about my flares because, or my flares and my, my painting jobs because I think they're turning out almost just as good as the professional painters. Always shake the crap out of your cans. The first layer is gonna be really light and it's just a tack layer for the paint to adhere to when you go for the second and the third layer. Okay, I'll show you when it's done. I am really afraid that I'm gonna get paint on the lens. This is what it looks like after three coats of paint. That was one very light, basically a dusting layer, just to create something for the rest of the paint to bond to. And then two layers. The second layer was thick, the third layer was extra thick. For the clear coat, you're gonna shake it like crazy for two minutes. Then you're gonna take the top out, this little red piece, you're going to pop it on the bottom here, hold the can upside down and push that piece in. Wait a couple seconds and you're going to flip it over and just shake it for another two minutes and then this stuff is ready to go. Quick note, this usually has a shelf life of about uh, 24 to 48 hours. 48 hours actually. So you can, um, you can start spraying and you can stop and come back but just don't use this after 48 hours but I'm gonna use this all in pretty much one shot to finish these. I have two cans just in case I run out. Just so you guys know, for the paint matched whites, I used a can of white per side skirt. So if you are thinking about doing your whole car, kind of do the math. I would assume you're gonna need, if you're gonna do bumper, fenders, side skirts, all in white, you're gonna need about five to six cans. I would say maybe more close to six cans. And for the black on the bumper, I believe I used two cans. Um, that's the crystal black silica bumper pieces. And then just match that with a clear coat. Um, you will use maybe a little bit less clear coat, but again, the more clear coat you spray, the cleaner it's gonna come out and the more you're gonna be able to buff it and just make it look really good afterwards. Okay, again, I'm, I'm gonna spray this. I am not going to show you me spraying this just because I wanna avoid getting any of the dust onto the lens and I will show you the finished prod. Uh, it is way later than I want it to be, but here is the finished product. It is now drying. Tomorrow I can see if it's still tacky. If it's not, then I will mount it up. I also went ahead and finished just clear coating the Crystal Black Silica STI Side Skirt Extensions and those look really, really good too. So as you can see, this clear coat just does a really, really good job. Now, of course, there's gonna be some surface imperfections. You can kind of see it here. Those will all buff out. So if you get a, if you wait like, uh, I would probably wait two or three days before you actually start buffing anything. But yeah, in two or three days, throw some buffing compound on that and either just use a microfiber towel or an actual polisher and this will all polish out really, really nice. Um, yeah, back to the side skirts. Okay, these side skirts, as you can tell, they look really, really good 
from far and then unfortunately had a couple little mishaps we've got a tiny little bug right there hopefully when I buff this it'll all kind of just hopefully we just smudge the bug I don't know what will happen but either way that's kind of a bummer and then on this side I think I just went a little heavy on the clear coat so it looks like a couple of runs but honestly as it's dried it's kind of started to level out a little better and I really like the way it looks but yeah the line at the bottom is nice and clean as you can see it's a real nice glossy finish and I will show you how they look in the daylight tomorrow when they're dry Here's a shot of the STI side skirts, and I don't know if you can see this, but man, this is so beautiful in the sunlight. You can just see all the reflections and the pearls inside of the paint. And uh, yeah, I mean, really just this finish is achieved through that clear coat and getting some quality paint. Here is the side skirt all finished up. And again, some polishing in about a day or two will just make this perfect. Here is the finished product all installed. And then the same, the same process applies for the fenders. This, the front bumperettes, they come off if you take the bumper off. This one, if you're not lazy, you can actually peel these apart. There's an inner shell in there. If you take that off, you can leave that black and then you reattach it with glue. Here's that rear bumper, or the rear, sorry, the rear side skirt, and then the rear bumper I've already traded back for an original one because I am going to be trading this car back in.